What up, what up, everyone? Welcome back to Week by Week. Uh, consistently. We are going to consistently do it week by week. You see what I did there? Yep. Bro, tell me I'm not the most fucking clever person on Earth. Uh, yep. So, uh, last night... Last night, yeah. Last night was the uh, the Hall of Fame game. Uh, preseason started officially. We are back in the NFL season. And, man, does it feel great. Does it oh, feel it was amazing. Great. Um... I want to open it up with Najee Harris a little bit, uh, and I know we didn't talk about this before recording, but uh, Najee Harris looks like a stud. I'll tell you someone else who I was impressed by is Micah Parsons. Bro, Mike, yeah, Micah Parsons was all over the field last night. He uh, was. He was everywhere. Uh, Haskins played a little bit. I'm not so sure how Haskins did, though, honestly. Uh, I, I watched the first half, so I didn't watch Haskins play much. but Mason Rudolph started off pretty hot. Uh, yeah, Chase Claypool looked amazing. Which, he did drop one ball, but yeah, yeah he looked right. Chase, Chase Claypool looked amazing. Uh, there was one play, I don't know if it was in the first or second quarter, but uh, it was actually in the first quarter because Mason Rudolph was playing. Uh, it was 3 nothing, and I don't know who the receiver was. It might have actually been Chase Claypool, but uh, Mason Rudolph delivered a beautiful like 40-yard dime downfield, and the receiver actually got hurt. I don't know who it was, uh, but... Yeah, bro, uh, I, I don't know. That was just interesting to me. I'm just excited because, you know, the NFL season is back. We finally have something to talk about. Yes. Um, I think the Titans actually play the Bears week three of the preseason. So that's Yeah, um, August 28th. That'll be uh, interesting. And they actually open up the season on my birthday. So, uh, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm, uh, that, that'll be a fun birthday. And it's on a Sunday, obviously, and I'm off, so. Uh, yeah, I officially requested Sundays off at work. Uh, I'm not. I, I'm not missing Titans football. I refuse. Understandable. I would not miss Bears football. But um, yeah, man. So uh, what we got for y'all today is uh, we're gonna hop into some way too early award predictions. Um, the way we're gonna break this down. So if any of y'all play Madden, we're kind of doing it like that. Uh, we got, of course, our NFL MVP. Then we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna transition to the AFC. And we're going to go Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, and then Rookie of the Year, both offense and defense. And then same with the NFC. So uh, now these picks uh, could be kind of kind of random because, you know, they're, they're obviously there's so many rookies and, you know, so many guys that, you know, maybe we have in the back of our minds that we think are going to take huge steps. Uh, so without further ado, uh, list off your l- – let me hear your MVPs. So – Winning the MVP, I have Josh Allen for the Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think it's any shocker. The dude was an absolute baller last year. Second MVP voting, or third. I may be wrong about that. He got got paid. Yes, he did. Six years, $258 million. I feel like, I I, I like, you know, obviously get your bag, but I don't know, man. That's... I actually read this. It's actually almost as much money as Tom Brady has gotten in his 21, 21 season career. People were trying I think to compare it to like Patrick Mahomes getting paid, but like, bro, Patrick Mahomes got paid after a after a fourteen and two season, an MVP, Super Bowl MVP. Yeah, he's like, like I, you know, Josh Allen's a hell of a QB, but he's not he's not Patrick Mahomes. No, 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 and I'll. I know I have him winning MVP, but Patrick Mahomes is better. Like, he's better. But, I, you know, I kind of – I see the bill absolutely taking off this season and uh, maybe <laughs> even a Super Bowl trip. But second, I have Patrick Mahomes. I don't think I really need to discuss this. Dude's a generational talent. Two Super Bowls in a row. Um, MVP. He's young as fuck, and he's getting the bag. Now, my third choice, okay, this is a, this is a dark horse. You know, people are going, I'm going to disagree with this, but I have Matthew Stafford. I love it. And I know me and you are absolutely high on him. You it. know, he's got a top defense. He's got weapons. He's got the line. He's got everything there, and we know how good and tough of a player that Matthew Stafford is. Mm-hmm. And I see him absolutely excelling in Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, so uh, my winner is Matthew Stafford. Listen, oh. bro, I uploaded a video – uh, a couple months ago, you know, when the trade happened, and I told everyone, I was like, my dark horse, I'm dead serious, is Matthew Stafford. And there was, you know, there was someone in my comments, and they were like, like, Matthew Stafford? Like, what the fuck kind of pick is that? And I'm like, like, dude, 
Nah. I and and, and the the Rams are my pick to come out of the NFC. They are up there for me, but I got the defending champs. Yeah, Brad, back. You, you cool. can't go against Brady, but uh, no. But uh, number two uh, is a guy not even in your top three. Really, Kyler Murray. Okay, okay. I'll I'll tell you this. He's on my list somewhere, but they got, I'll, uh, I'll let you continue. You know. They got uh they upgraded their offensive line, you know, uh this off season. Of course they acquired uh was it Rodney Hudson who they got? Mm-hmm. Um and then of course, you know, they signed AJ Green, which you know it's you, we don't know how good he's gonna be. But of course they still have a still have D Hop. Um they drafted Rondell Moore. Rondell Moore. I love it, and I, I think Murray I I think Murray has so much potential to have like a Lamar esque like M V P season. Even uh, Christian Kirk, even I mean he's Christian Kirk. He's a uh, solid is Andy Isabella still there? Yeah, he's there. Andy Isabella is still there. I mean, I man, I, that's that's deep. <laughs> I I seriously think Kyler Murray has potential to have like a Lamar type MVP season. I think Murray. Yeah. I don't think Murray would go over a thousand rushing, and I think he'd throw a little bit more passing yards. But yeah, uh, because Kyler Murray, one of the biggest you know knocks on him. You know, coming into the draft was his arm, but he proved this year like that's not a problem. He's, I think he's exceptional. I absolutely love him he's, as a player. He's got, and, and you know, I wasn't so set on him being the number one pick, uh, but I remember you know watching him uh, against West Virginia a couple years ago uh, last year, Dana Holgerson and uh, Will Greer, and uh, score was like fifty nine, fifty six, dude, and they were and like they were in an absolute shootout because that's when West Virginia's off. You know, they had David Sills, uh, Gary oh, Jennings. Yeah. Uh, that team was ridiculous offensively, but uh, and Kyler Murray had like a like an eighty yard run to seal it off, and I was just like, "Wow, <laughs> dude is ridiculous." But uh, yeah, Kyler Murray is my number two, and then number three, I don't even think I have to explain it. Patrick Mahomes, uh, yeah, he's he's gonna be in there, and it's really hard for me not to make a list, you know, without him in there. Uh, so, uh, one thing I want to ask for both me and you is how come we didn't put the reigning MVP Aaron Rodgers? I just don't – I mean, I don't know, dude. I, I have a feeling – me and my uh, my brother's a Packers fan, and me and my brother were talking about it, and he said he thinks Aaron Rodgers is going to go the fuck off this year, and like he did last year. And, and, and I agree. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to have a bad year, but I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to do what he did last year. Uh, Aaron Rodgers I, at this point is, fuck, is fed up with the Packers. He's made it clear. He, you know, he wants out, and I know we've said this for the last three years, you know, uh, but I think this truly is Aaron Rodgers' last year in Green Bay. I agree, and I think that locker room is going to be absolute hell. Apparently, That's the reason I didn't put him. Ari apparently have some beef too. I don't. I seen it on Twitter. I don't know if it's real or not, but uh, you know, I hate the Packers. I hate Rodgers. But here on the podcast, I like to keep it unbiased, just just a little bit. You know, I like to hate on some, but. Like I said, the the locker room is going to be hell. I I just don't. I, I see the Packers winning the division. I'll be honest, you know. As but long as Aaron Rodgers is there, that division's theirs. I'm I'm sorry. It's it's theirs. I'm I'm embarrassing, and I agree. But I just I don't see them being the Packers that they have been for the past two seasons. You know, making it to the NFC Conference Championship game. I just think there's too much drama. That's as simple as that. I think the only two people on that on that team that are literally like consistent friends is Adams and and Rodgers. I mean, because mm-hmm. Devontae Adams literally came out and said, "No Rodgers, no me," which I think is fucked up. By the way, yeah. it's a little bit, but that organization just seems kind of uh, kind of a joke right now. But uh, I, I think it always hasn't been a joke. I think it just got lucky with quarterbacks. Uh, I'm gonna hop into. Um, Oh, and another thing about the rating MVP thing, player. It's it's not normal for a player to win back to back MVP. So, it's not. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit more common in like NBA than it is, but like in NFL, it, it doesn't really happen. So, uh, yeah, that that's also my reasoning. But uh, so I'm gonna transition here if you're ready into the AFC. Okay. Um, yep. so what we what do you want to start it off with? Do you want to go offensive player of the year? Yeah, let's we'll go offensive player. Of the year. My number one. This is what I was talking about when we were on FaceTime. My number one is going to shock the shit out of you. Okay. Jonathan Taylor. Really? It pains me to say it. 
But Jonathan Taylor had a monster rookie year. They're already hurting quarterback-wise with Wentz getting hurt. Taylor's going to get a fuck ton of carries behind a great offensive line. Jonathan Taylor, I think, is going to I, – I seriously think Jonathan Taylor has potential to lead the league in yards as a running back this wow. year. Wow. Or be top three. I mean – that That's a take and a half, I'll be honest. I mean, but it's like all all the pieces are in play. I mean, you know, the quarter, is. their quarterback's hurt. They're not going to be throwing the ball as much. They still have an amazing offensive line. Their weapons, you know, receiving-wise aren't great. The pieces mm-hmm. are there. It's all there for Jonathan Taylor to have a monster year, and that's why he is my Offensive Player of the Year pick. Okay. okay. Um, number two, I got Patrick Mahomes. Once again, I don't think I needed to explain that. No. And then number three, I have uh, Lamar. I – Listen, you know, I know I've been notorious for shitting on Lamar, but... Uh, I hate Lamar. I, I think Lamar is going to have, you know, somewhat of a bounce-back year and, and still be really good. Um, that's uh, that's really all I can say about that. So, uh, if you want to give me... Let me hear your uh, offensive player of the year. Okay, so I have more than three names. I kind of didn't think of the running back position. So, um, obviously the MVP, you know, Josh Allen. But... Uh-huh. I'm just going to kick him out of this for a bit because, you know, I kind of covered him. I'm going to go Derek Henry. Um, <laughs> you know, me, me and you have talked about it. You know, we think we don't think it's going to be 2000 again, but I, <laughs> he's the best running back in the league. That's just – he's a monster. And I I know they got Julio, but Henry's going to get his touches. And that's – right there is a statement. Right there. So, y- you could say he's my number two. That That's just kind of – I don't know. See, I, I kind of don't like talking about players back to back, so that's why I kind of keep. I'm trying out. to give other position love that aren't quarterbacks. Yeah, that, that's what I just thought of because you know quarterbacks like the big name, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I just didn't even consider it. But another name is Travis Kelsey, mm-hmm. and uh, you know he led the league in yards last year, didn't he? Or he was top two. He was top two. Yeah, he's a monster. You know, Sammy Watkins is gone. Uh, they got Nicole Hardman, who's going to have to jump up. Obviously, Tyreek Hill's there. Um, who's their number three receiver? Mm, Demarcus Robinson? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, Kelsey already gets his targets. But, you know, I think with Watkins gone, and I know Watkins wasn't that big of a factor, but I see Kelsey maybe getting a few more targets again. If, eh, yeah, yeah, I think so. No, I mean, I like and, it. You know, it's showing love to not not quarterback. I like it. Yeah, so you obviously Patrick Mahomes. Well, like I said, I got five names here, and these are two of my dark horse guys. It's Justin Herbert for the Chargers, who I think I like could I, I love could it. win some games this year. And I have Ryan Tannehill for the Titans. I love you. And and I I just think you know with Julio Jones, AJ Brown, uh, Frisker, who they got at tight end, who I've heard you were really high on. And I've actually watched some film on him, and I actually like him. I love him. He, he does not drop balls. That's Bro, that's what I was telling you during the season. And the targets he got, he literally didn't drop the ball. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. So, Julio Jones, A.J. Brown, the dude's got it all on offense. Good offensive line. I don't think I have much to say, much to say about that. So, you know, that's my list. You know, I have more than three guys. But, you know, got to show some love to other positions. So, I want to talk about uh... – or let's 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 go into defensive player of the year. Okay. Um, my pick uh, for AFC defensive player of the year is uh, T.J. Watt. Okay. I I you know I I that's one that I don't really think you I, I have to explain. I mean you know last year, yeah. last year everyone said he was uh he was robbed. He no he didn't win it last year did he? Aaron Donald won it right? Aaron Donald won. Yeah. I do think T.J. Watt should have won it, but I don't think it was like a landslide. But some like some people make it. And then, my number, and then my number two might come as a surprise, but Xavier Howard. Now, oh, a lot, a lot, and, and, and you know that's not going to be in Miami. I don't, I don't know where he's going to be. Uh, could be in Tennessee, and if he is, I'll, I'll love it. I'll buy his jersey. But uh, someone was comparing uh, Xavier Howard, and I want to talk about this briefly to one of the Jacksons, either JC or Josh. I don't remember which one. Uh. That you know, because they always have like high picks, like seven or eight picks. I think it was, uh, I think it's JC Jackson. But what you know, what separates uh, Xavier Howard is Xavier Howard doesn't get burned a lot. He led the league in deflections. I don't, even, I don't know if you know that. 
I did not know that. Uh, yeah, Xavier Howard is more than just a more than just a high interceptions guy. Xavier Howard is truly a lockdown corner. I agree. Um, I agree. And the number three, I'll tell you this. I'm I have sorry. a corner on this list, but it's not him. I told you that I figured we would disagree with the corner. Yeah. Um, and then number three, uh, another one that I don't really think should be a question is uh, Miles Garrett. I'll tell you this: two of the three guys you named are on my list. TJ so, and Miles Garrett. Yeah. So, so TJ the, Watts, my winner. So I was right. The 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 corner is who we disagree on. All right. So let me. Yes. Hear it. Let me hear it. So TJ Watt as the winner. Dude's a sack machine. He gets to the quarterback. Although I do think Pittsburgh's defense will decline just a tad this year. I just have this gut feeling. Um, I, I feel like the offense is below average, and I feel like the defense is going to be on the field more. It's the same song and dance with a team like the Bears. The offense was bad. Like, the defense is loaded, but the defense is on the field 80% of the time. Mm-hmm. So, that's just how I see it. And our second is Miles Garrett. Uh, Browns upgraded uh, tremendously. Had a great draft. Like I said, another sack machine. Now, showing more love to the Bills – and I don't know how you'll feel about this, but number three, I have Tredavious White. I thought about it. Now, I, I know he's not really flashy. He's not a flashy guy, but he's just – he's locked down, man. He like is Tredavious, a lot down. Tredavious White is one of the most, like, underrated, but also, like, locked down cor- – like, it's – it's weird because, like, you don't hear, like, when talking about, like, top corners, I feel like Trey White's not mentioned a lot. He's not, and he should. I mean, he's a hell of a corner. He's not as flashy or as talky as these other guys. Like, he, he's a really quiet guy, and I absolutely love that about him. He's one of my favorite corners in the league. And I'm telling you, I have tremendous hype for the Bills this season. They are actually, in my opinion, going to go to the Super Bowl. Like, that's just my opinion, of course, but – yeah, number three, Tredavious White, great corner, and everybody's got to show him the love and respect he deserves because he is a lockdown. So, I want to talk about uh, or let, let's go into the uh, offensive rookie of the year for the AFC. I I went with the safe option, uh, Trevor Lawrence. I did as well. I think Lawrence is going to have a monster year, um, or not a monster year, but you know. A, a, so, a solid rookie QB year. Uh, you know, it's not like the Jaguars are a bad yeah, team. Yeah, it's a safe pick. And, I, and I've stressed to you numerous times, there is no reason that that team should have been a one-win a one win team. No reason. Uh, 100% agree. There is 100%. so much young talent on that team that is so good. And uh, and real quick, I know that this is, uh, you know, off topic, but I think LaVisca Chenault is going to have a, a great second year. I, I love LaVisca Chanel. I love LaVisca. I love him. I think he's a stud, and I think he's going to have a great second year. Um, I like DJ Chark as well. I love DJ Chark. Um, and then, of course, I think – did they let D.D. Westbrook go? Yeah, they did. Um, and then number – my number two guy might surprise you a little bit. It's uh, it's Jamar Chase. <laughs> it's mine as well. Wow. I think uh, Jamar Chase is going to absolutely ball out with a healthy Burrow back. Um, 100% you know, agree. I, I think Jamar Chase is going to ball out. I think he could have like a Justin Jefferson type. Uh, type. Year. I do too. And, you know, not not to mention other guys like Tyler Boyd on that team or Auden Tate. I think Jamar Chase comes in and takes that number one receiver spot on that team. I and like agree. I said, much love to Tyler Boyd. I think he's a, a, a solid receiver. Well, I, mean, I think Auden Tate's Boyd underrated. And Tate, but... Boyd and Tate are both, are both slot guys. Ooh, T. Higgins, T. Higgins, T. Higgins. T. Higgins I didn't think of I like to. I yeah. mean, their young receiving core. I mean, even then, like Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd's not old. No, Tate's I think he's like old. twenty-seven. He's twenty-seven. I mean, that, that that team is good. Young, you know, young player wise, their offense is young and good. Yeah, I think Higgins takes a step this year, and I think Chase dominates. And I, I see Boyd kind of taking a dip this year, but still being a solid weapon. Uh, and then my number three is uh, Zach Wilson. Uh. Zach Wilson, I, he's my favorite QB in this class. You want to hear my list? Let's hear it. Trevor Lawrence won. You know, safe pick. You know, starter. Jacksonville, young team. Jamar Chase, like we just talked about. Now, number three. Okay, I'm going to have an explanation for Zach Wilson. I'll get to it. But I have Najee Harris. I like it. And yeah, I like it. 
I kind of thought you'd disagree just based on the offensive line, but just watching him run yesterday, I know it was one game, but, man, he pushes for yards. And, you know, I, I was kind of mad on him at the pick. I thought maybe they could have traded back. Just I like, still don't think like it a was a good spots. pick. Even if he balls out, I don't think it's a good pick. It's growing on me. I'll say that. It's growing on me. But I love him as a player. And now to Zach Wilson, the reason I did not put him is – I think he's going to struggle in his rookie season. But I'm not saying he's going to be bad. I'm just saying he's going to have a slow rookie season. Because, you know, he played at BYU. It wasn't the greatest talent. So I kind of think, think he's going to be like a below average quarterback this year. But I think as the season's Absolutely. progress, well, you know, he'll pick it up. Adjusting to yeah. The NFL. yeah I now, that, now, that is my reason. I'm not The Jets aren't a team like the Jaguars. I still think they have way more holes. And, man. Maybe you could agree on that. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Um, so, like I said, slow first year, but I think he picks it up. Uh, all right. So, defensive rookie of the year. My number one may surprise you, but I don't know. Jaylen, I think mine will surprise you. Jalen Phillips. Oh, God. Fuck. <laughs> Is yours Jalen Phillips? <laughs> yes. That's ass. And then, uh, all right, number two is uh, Patrick Sertan. Okay. Number three is Caleb Farley. Okay, there is one guy on my list that might surprise the hell out of you. Uh, so let me yeah, let me hear it. Okay, so I got Jalen Phillips. I think he's a stud. I think he's the best pass rusher in this class. Now maybe that's up for debate for guys like Quiddy Pay, but I think Phillips is going to be a stud. Now number two, he got drafted by the Browns. He fell. Jeremiah oh, Owosu Gormoa. Yeah. Now he's a ball hawk. Absolutely love him in coverage. Absolutely love him against the run. I think he is a perfect all-around player, and I think he fits perfect in this Browns defense. And I think he is a absolute stud in his rookie season. I can't lie. I forgot about him. Now, number three, I have Patrick Sertan. My, my um, I was kind of on the fence Farley, of putting someone else. My, my reasoning for Farley is, is, you know, Tennessee's secondary isn't good, and, you know, he's going to be kind of – forced i guess mm. to take over that number one role decently soon and uh yeah and, and Vrabel's already said you know they're gonna start him off slow uh, i think jack rabbit's gonna be number one and then uh i don't know who our, our our corner number two is gonna be i mean from what i hear it's completely up for grabs right now uh christian fulton has apparently not been amazing in camps which kind of scares me uh because you know I, I love christian fulton i've explained that i've expressed that numerous times i love him uh, but I think Caleb Farley is going to be forced, you know, by by mid midish season to to take over that role, and uh, and I think he's going to you know slowly work his way into it and and be very good, you know, as good as a rookie corner can be. Now I will say I would have put Farley if I knew he wasn't going to start slow. But the only reason I picked Sertan over him was because of that reason. I think Sertan's going to be a solid player in this league. But here's my thinking: I don't. I personally don't believe he's ever going to reach the absolute lockdown spot, like a lockdown corner. I think he's going to be like a low end tier one type of corner. Now, you may disagree. That's just that's kind of like the vibe I get from him. I Maybe like a so. guy like Powell Fuller, like in that stance, not like same style of play, but as mm -hmm. like respect of a player. That's the sense I get from him. I don't know. He, Maybe I'm wrong. I like defensive players. <laughs> he reminds me a lot of Okuda from last year. I agree. Uh, I, I see Akuda, Akuda wasn't too good. Uh, but I, I think he played very limited, though, honestly. Mm -hmm. But uh, all right. So I'll let you transition into the NFC, and I'll let you start it off. All right. So NFC Offensive Player of the Year, obviously Matthew Stafford. Um, you know, we kind of debated this, talking about the MVP and all that. But some other names, like I said, I, I kind of like to show some love for other positions. So, obviously, Russell Wilson. Um, He's my number Absolute three. stud. Absolute stud. But I, I'm going to say uh, DeAndre Hopkins. I almost put D-Hop. Now, now wow. D-Hop, you know, better offensive line, more weapons around him, even though they already had. Who's their tight end? Who's, uh... Cardinals tight end. Is it Tyler Croft, or is he still in Buffalo? Nah, Dawson Knox is out in Buffalo. Uh, yeah, that's right. But I thought Croft was their second string last year. I actually don't know who the Cardinals tight end is. See, that's what was confusing me. Is it Charles Clay? 
Let me uh, let me look up. You can keep talking, but let me uh, let me look okay. up your depth chart real quick while you're talking. Now I have Kyler Murray on there as well. Um, we both talked about this. Um, he's a stud, man. Um, he's got the line. He's got the weapons. You know. Now the running back's kind of a question for me. I, I'm not a big fan of. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think tight end is a little improvement, but you know mm-hmm. the receivers are there. The receivers are there. Um, another guy, uh, Devontae Adams, um, debatably, <laughs> debatably the best receiver in the league. I still think that goes to, to D Hop, but oh, it's a little close for me. It's a little close. I'll I be honest. It's very close. Now, this might absolutely surprise the shit out of you, but I'm going to put Saquon Barkley. I, bro, I thought I think Saquon's going to win comeback player of the year. That, that was exactly what I was about to say. Yep. I think he comes back strong. Um, I don't think people are going to expect him to come back strong, so that's why I think he's going to take off. I, I, I think I think he'll be one of the best running backs in the league this year. I 100% agree. I, he, I think he's comeback player of the year. 100%. Um, I agree with that. So my top three, uh, we've already kind of talked about it. My winner was Matt Stafford. Uh, my number two was Dalvin Cook. I didn't think of Dalvin Cook. And then my number Ooh. three was, uh, of course, one of my MVP picks, uh, Kyler Murray. Okay. So, all right. So, uh, what you got next? So, we have NFC Defensive Player of the Year. I'm going to start off with the obvious. The best defensive player in the league, and that is Aaron Donald. He's an absolute stud. Maybe on the league's best defense, according to last year they was. Maybe they decline this year. Maybe they don't. I think they will just a tad, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But anyways, great defense. Now next, everyone thinks he's fucking decline, and he's not. And that is Khalil fucking Mack of my Chicago Bears. Sack and tack, has- formerly of the, the white and black, or whatever it is. I don't even remember. Yeah, silver and black. Silver and black. Why did I say white? <laughs> Jesus Christ. We don't talk about that. Why did I say white? Why? But yes. I will say this, Matt has lost a step. But the way that some people make it, it that's not true, okay? White. So, here's my discussion. In 2018, our defense was led by Vic Fangio, the best defense in the league that year. Guess what? We blitzed half the time. Actually, more than half of the time. So, Vic leaves. He goes gets a head coaching job in Denver. Here comes Chuck Pagano, old man Chuck. You know, 80% oh, percent of the time, he rushed four and dropped seven. 80% of the time. That is the only reason I think Mac hasn't reached double-digit sacks. The only reason. Now we bring in a guy who was Vic, Vic Fangio's right-hand man and Sean Desai, and I will put money on it that Mac gets double-digit sacks. I would put money on it. I would yeah, put my left nut on it. I hate the narrative that NFL fans have of, like, I don't know, dude. Like, NFL fans have just ran with this narrative that Khalil Mack is just not the same player. Like, dude, like, 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 shut up. Like, He's getting up there in age, and maybe he has lost his step. I mean, I'll even admit it. He kind of disappears a little bit sometimes. No, but, he he is definitely, a but, but he's definitely regressed. I mean, he's pushing 30. I'd say he might be yeah. 30. Or is he 30? He is, he is 30. He's right at 30. I mean, but, like, like you can't expect him, you know, to be, you know <laughs> – this this best you know top two defensive player uh, in the league for his whole career, but I mean he's definitely not. People are acting like he's regressed to damn Lorenzo Carter. Yeah, I will say this: I do think he's still a top two defensive player. In the I league. think he is number two. I still think he's number two. And, he is a force. And, and this down year that everyone keeps saying he had, it wasn't even that bad of a year. Like that's a. Heck it of wasn't a year. even his fault. I don't even think it was his fault. I mean, if you're a bear. If you're the Bears, you know good and well the Bears are a blitzing team with Rookwan Smith, a middle linebacker, Keem Hicks, Eddie Goldman, who's back this year, Ball Nichols, Lil Mack, maybe even Robert Quinn takes a step this year, old man. But anyways, back to my point, you know, you got to blitz with a team like this. You can't just rush four, drop seven, 80% of the time. That's absolute bullshit. That's mm-hmm. fucking bullshit with people like Mack on the outside. I'm so glad that old man fucking retired. I hate that motherfucker. But yeah. I, I think Sean Asai brings a new energy. I think he brings back a Vic Pangeo style of play, and I think his defense. I'm not saying it's going to be 28 to but I think it will be top five, top six in the league. <laughs> my top three was, uh, of course, Aaron Donald. Uh, James Bradbury was my number two. Uh, 
I think James Bradbury's a stud. I, I mean, I don't really know what else to say. I, I love James Bradbury. And uh, my number three was Kalomak, who we've already. Oh, known. I forgot. I forgot to mention my three. Yeah, my three was Chase Young. Now, you, I, I know I'm bigger on Chase Young than you are. I, I know you're still I'm big not, on him. It's not that I'm not big on him. I mean, I just think. I don't know, man. I think Chase Young got a little overrated. I could see it. I just feel like his presence was almost like a Mac discussion. Like his presence just opened up the defense yeah, in yeah. that way. And I think I think his second year he just takes off. I, I, you know, I think it's I mean, double digits. I don't disagree, and I'm not saying he won't take off. I just, you know, I'm just not. I'm not as big of a fan of of Chase Young as some people. Yeah, I, I will. I'll be honest. I love Chase Young. I I think he's a top six, top seven pass rusher in the league. I uh, just. You know, three and a half sacks last year, a little overwhelming. And I, I get your point where you say he's a little overrated. And I'm not completely disagreeing with you, but just because I actually did watch a few of Washington's games last year. And, man, he he's a force. And, and I think he takes off. Now, a dark horse, um, I like adding some dark horses. Fred Warner, middle linebacker for the 49ers. You know, if this team's healthy, this 49ers defense is going to be amazing. Maybe 2019 form, maybe – Nick Bosa, Jason Barrett, who impressed people last year. Um, but I think Fred Warner, you know, I think he gets the tackles. I think he gets some sacks. And I could see him even getting a few picks. And I think he's an all-around great player. I agree. I agree. Um, so, offensive rookie of the year. Now, I'm going to have a guy in here that's going to surprise you. But uh, let me hear your I'm going to have one, too. Let, let me hear Okay, your so, first. I'm going to put Kyle Pitts one. He's my number one. The, the only reason I didn't put a guy like Fields and Lance, who I'm not saying are are not on this list, is only because they're not starting week one. That is my – just kind of throwing me off. I love Fields. I like Lance, but, you know, being a Bears fan, watching him play at a training camp, I've actually watched some videos on him. He's impressing people. I mean, I think he's going to be an absolute stud. He's got all the attributes. He's He runs a 440. A 440 at 6'3". 220 pounds. You can't tell me that's not insane. No, it is. It is. It is. But anyways, I won't ride his dick anymore. I know I'm pretty good at that. But, uh... Okay, fuck you. But I actually have two names here. Now, one of them got drafted by the Jets in the second round. And I think that is Elijah Moore. And, uh... You know, it, it may surprise you. It For might. NFC? <laughs> Yeah, you did what I did with Herbert. You, you did. did. Okay, okay. We'll we'll just erase that. So, uh, anyways, I'll talk about him because I, I wasn't thinking. I don't feel as bad now. You don't fuck you. But anyways, I'll, I'll talk about him. We're going back to, to the AFC. We're going to build a time machine, or we're going to get on flight eight two eight and fly into the storm. Um, oh except this time to the past. But anyways, Elijah Moore. I think he's going to be a great outside weapon for the Jets. You know, I kind of made a little mistake putting him in the NFC because I was kind of in a rush because we – I did this right before we recorded. So, you know, guys, forgive me, forgive me. I'm not that stupid. But anyways, I think he's going to be a great weapon besides of, beside of James and Crowder. And, you know, I think he'll get the targets. But, you know, we're going to move back to the NFC now. You know, so we're going to – five years later in Flight 828, Trey Lance for the 49ers. Now – I think Fields I plays earlier than Lance. Because I don't think Lance plays this year. See, I was going back and forth. But my my reasoning is, although I don't think Garoppolo's a bad quarterback, I think he gets injured. Damn. I mean, that's just my reasoning. And I know Kyle Shanahan loves Lance. I mean, the dude went to Justin Fields' pro day and was there writing up plays for Trey Lance. I know. I seen you can't that. tell me that's not disrespectful. I've seen that. That is completely that's, that's disrespectful. That's disrespectful as shit. That is disrespectful as fuck. But that's my reasoning. You know, Shanahan loves him as a player. And I kind of think they're going to rush him in just a little bit, even if Garoppolo is underperforming. See, my reasoning, well, my thinking is that I think Lance should should be the guy to sit in the draft. He just he has less experience than some of the other guys. And, you know, he play North Dakota State. Um, so, I kind of feel like they were rushing a little bit. But, yeah, you know, that's who I had at number three. That was, like, the one part of the list that really, like, I didn't know what to do. So, I'm kind of so curious to see what Elijah you put. Moore. 
Bro, fuck you. All right, so my number one is Kyle Pitts. Okay. Uh, my number two is Justin Fields because I think by week four, five, I think Fields is going to be the starter. I'm at the four range. I'm at the four. I think Fields is going to be the starter, and I th- I think I, – I'll just be honest with you. I do think the Bears are going to start like, like, like one and three, two and two, and then I think they're going to finish positive under Fields. I see one and two. Um, like right at week four because, you know, we play the Rams week one, which I think we get blew out. Then we play the Bengals, which I think we'll win. And then we play the Browns, which I think we'll lose. Ah, so Joel that's Mack might murder Joe Burrow. <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> Offensive line is horrible. I mean, God. But, uh, the, and then my number three is going to surprise the hell out of you and everyone else. All Rondell right. Moore. I thought about it, but the only reason I did it is cause, just because I know how deep they are, so I don't know if he'll really get his targets. There's so many. Yeah, but, bro, they wouldn't have taken him. Where did they take him at? Second round. But second I don't round. know how late in the second round. Yeah. I, I love Rondell Moore. Rondell Moore was one of my so-called draft crushes. Love Rondell Moore. I think he's going to be a stud. Uh, and I think he's going to get the targets. Uh because I don't think I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't think uh, AJ Green is going to get a crazy amount of targets this year. I don't either. But I think I think the clear number two that are is obviously D Hop, and I think Christian Kirk. So that but, third uh, spot to me is just kind of up in the air. For some reason I did not put him. And then I got all right. So uh, you ready to go into the defensive rookie of the year? Where I know. Uh, uh, What's up? I got I got one more player. All right, let's that I was thinking about putting. You talked about him so much, and that's Terrence Marshall. Love him. I love him. I love Terrence Marshall. Terrence Marshall, so is, Terrence Marshall is my favorite player in this class. I love Terrence Marshall. So, obviously, the Panthers lost Curtis Samuel to the Washington football team, which I wish they, they would get a fucking name. Um, but, yeah, you know, they got uh, DJ Moore, who I, I think is a pretty underrated receiver. I like him. But... Um, What's that other guy? Robbie that guy? Anderson. Yeah, Robbie Anderson. He was and actually I think, very, very good this past year. He was. But I think Terrence Marshall comes in and at that number three spot, and I think he kind of excels at it. I think Sam Darnold has a good year with Carolina, and, and I kind of see Terrence Marshall having that kind of year too. I love Terrence Marshall. Yeah, I, I was wondering if you'd put him. Because he's no, one of those receivers. I don't think he's like, going to get the targets. I kind of think he will. Maybe not like those other two guys, but I think he'll get his targets. He could. Uh, so I'm gonna put a lot more. Are you ready for a defensive rookie of the year? Yes. I have a guy on here who's gonna surprise you. But I think I might have one surprise you too, and I think you're gonna have him. So who do I go? So who goes first? Uh, you go. I went first last time. So my number one, my defensive rookie of the year for the NFC, is. J.C. Horn. Um, okay. Let okay. me let now. I, I have my uh, my reasoning. So obviously, hold on. Let me pull this up. Let me, let me pull this up. So uh, you know the Panthers secondary isn't amazing. Dante Jackson's not bad. Um, and I'm pretty sure. Where's uh Where's AJ Boye? He. He's in. Um. Is, nah, he got released in Denver. Cause he got. He, no, he got signed by Carolina. He did, but I'm pretty sure he got uh, he suspended. Suspended. I don't know what for, but I know he. But I'm pretty sure he suspended. Um. But uh, I think J.C. Horn, kind of like a Caleb Farley situation in a way, like he's gonna be kind of forced to you know take over the corner number two. I don't. He he definitely won't be corner number one because you know Dante Jackson's not bad. Uh. I think J.C. Horn is going to be a stud. He's quick. He's athletic. He's he's physical. I love him. I, I think J.C. Horn. I'm hoping you don't say this guy's name. My number two is uh, Zayvon Collins. Fuck! <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I mean, because uh, obviously Arizona's pass rush is already going to be, or at least it should be, amazing. Yeah, uh, I, I think it will be. It's you know it's already amazing. You'll have uh, Chandler Jones on the outside, uh, 
rushing J.J. Watt uh, as your interior rush, and then probably Zayvon Collins on the outside. And I I think he's going to excel because teams are going to be so worried about J.J. Watt and Chandler Jones, then that frees up you know Zayvon Collins to come in and have a monster monster rookie year. Yeah. Um. And I didn't even know this. Zayvon Collins is a six five two sixty. I I, like two, six, I did three. not know he was six five. I know that either. My number three. This is my surprise. Jameen Davis. Wow. Okay. I, I will say this. I thought about it, but uh, a lot okay. of people were kind What's of like, like questioning that pick. I love the pick. There was, I'm still one to question it. There, I'm still one to question it. There was no like. Um, like I, I don't think that there was no clear cut like number one like middle linebacker in this class. There was no, I, I don't think there was any great middle linebacker in this class. Uh, I could be wrong. I mean, you know, who knows? Someone's gonna come out and surprise everyone. But uh, yeah, I say this because um, Washington's uh, Washington's linebacking core is not great, and Jameen Davis is probably gonna automatically be forced to play. Uh, you know, a, a lot of reps his rookie year. I think there's like their starting middle linebacker right now might be John Bostic. I don't know if it's uh, they have uh, Cole Holcomb too. He's he was actually I didn't mind him last he'll year. Be their, he'll be their sub. Uh, he will. But uh, I think Jameen Davis is going to be you know he's going to be forced to play a lot in his rookie season, and I do think he's going to be good. I mean, there, I I really don't know so, what else to uh, I will say, say besides this. that, but I will say this: he he would be my number four. But if I was Washington, I would have drafted a tackle. That's just my personal opinion. I just – Oh, yeah, no. I, I don't know. I, because Christian Dersaw was on the board, and th- that's what I would have done. They got if Cosby, I was Washington. Though. Yeah, they did. Their which, offensive line is not bad. No, I mean, they got Looking Leno from the Bears. He's average. Um, they got Leno. Uh, they still have Scherf. Uh, Chase uh, – is the Chase Rulier or whatever his name is? Is he their center? Yeah. And then they drafted yeah. Cosme. I I actually like their O line. I don't mind it. I just I would have liked to see their cell pick. Yeah, of course, fish That's magic. Just my yeah. So um, let's go off top a little bit. How do you think he'll perform? I think Fitz Magic is going to be a stud. Okay. Okay. I kind of think he'll be at that average kind of guy. I, th- I think he'll be a solid bridge. Bro, I, I love That's how just Fitz Magic opinion. plays because Fitz Magic does not give a fuck to take the shot downfield. He doesn't, and I absolutely love it. And I think that's how every quarterback should be. And you need that to win. Yeah, you do. You got to take the shots. He does not care. He will launch it. So, uh, you want to hear my three? Mm-hmm. Number one, Zayvon Collins. Okay. I mean, you pretty much explained it with two of the – guys on my list number two michael parsons now i know you're not big on parsons and i kind of thought about putting him over collins but michael, i just think arizona has a better I'm, defense. I'm not too big on michael parsons for the same reason i wasn't too big on isaiah simmons last year because my biggest question is like where does he play like, i just feel like he's not he's all over the field he's not great in coverage he's not but he's not like an inside guy but he's not going to rush the passer. But, like, where where does he play? I think he's – see, this is kind of another reason why I didn't put him at number one. But – and I know it's one preseason game, but he was everywhere. And, you know, like I said, it's one preseason game. I probably shouldn't be overhyped about him. I should not be a Cowboys fan right now. But I, I think he's going to be a good player, man. I just – you know, watching him play, watching him watch the ball the way he did, him – playing the rushing game like he did. I thought he did great in the rushing game. I mean, he just he, he just seems like a really smart player. And, uh, yeah, he's number two. I don't know, man. He He's like the biggest question mark out of all the rookies for me. Like, I'm not sure what to think about him. I, I mean, you, you know, still I, okay, I mean, I don't disagree. That, like, I, I think, you know, I compared him to Isaiah Simmons a little bit. I think, you know, he's a hell of a player. I just, once again, I don't know where he plays. Uh, I mean, I I don't know where he plays. Same with Isaiah Simmons. Isaiah Simmons, you know, he was better as the year went on. 
But Isaiah Simmons got off to a very slow start because where do you play him? See, I'm kind of still in the linebacker range for Simmons. That's just my opinion. Maybe I mean, like a middle linebacker. I guess, but I don't know, dude. And, and, it's, yeah. the, and it's the same with Micah Parsons. Like I, which Isaiah Simmons can play, uh, you know, middle linebacker a lot better than Micah Parsons could. I don't think Micah Parsons is a middle linebacker. But I also I think he's outside. That's just. See, I kind of said ball hawk earlier, but now thinking about it, I think he's a little more of an outside guy. Just seeing how he was against the run. Um, yeah. I think he's got the speed to get off the edge. Um, I would like to see him get a bit bigger. Maybe gain some more muscle. Then maybe I would be more confident saying this. But, you know, guys like Simmons, guys like Parsons, it's really hard to evaluate because they are, like, in the middle of two positions. So you don't know if one's going to be a strong safety, a middle linebacker, an outside linebacker, or, again, a middle linebacker. You just don't know. I think, I think Isaiah Parsons, Simmons, what was he actually drafted as? Was he drafted as a strong safety or an outside linebacker? Yeah, he was. He was strong safety. I thought so, but, uh, I, you know, I don't I, – I think Isaiah Simmons could definitely be a strong safety. Uh, I see it. I see it's it. It's just for, the, me, it's either got, for me, it's either got to be strong safety or middle linebacker. I'm kind of leaning a little more towards the middle linebacker just because of his size. But I, I think he can play both positions. Because he's – they run a 3-4, don't they? Uh, yeah, and I, and I'm sorry, but he he's not a three four outside linebacker. He's not. Maybe maybe in a four three, but he's not a three four outside linebacker. So to me, he's either got to go inside or play him at safety. All right, I'm gonna ask you this: Which scheme do you prefer, three four or four three? Three four. I'm the same way. I swear, man. I think three four just opens it up so much more. For three four just makes. I, I think three four just makes defense looks defenses look so much more beautiful. I do and too. I, got, I just and, think it, it's, and it's got so much more room for like really versatile guys. I agree, hundred. Like, like Isaiah Simmons, because I think because I think if you run a four three with a guy like Isaiah Simmons, which I don't know though. Then again, I mean, if you run a four three with a guy like Simmons, he could be. He, he could be a 4-3 a outside linebacker, for sure. He could, but here's my reasoning. Look at the way the game is played these days. It's so much more pass-heavy. I just feel like it's better in the passing region, a 3-4 is. Yeah, I, I agree. Than a 4-3. And I, that's the way I see it, because maybe back in the day, you know, 4-3 was better. You know, I've, I've talked to my dad about this. He was all on the 4-3 and absolutely hated the 3-4. But ever since the game's kind of changed, he's leaned the same direction as like me and you. He's all about the fourth, not the fourth three, but the three four. I mean, I could be saying this also because Tennessee runs a, run, runs a three four, and I and I love it. But yeah, I love the Bears three four. I I don't know. I've always been more of a three four guy. I I love three four defenses. So uh, do you want to do coach of the year? We can, but I'll be honest. I haven't. Put, you I I haven't put any guys down for coach of the year. I'm not either. So, uh, if we want before we end it off, because we're we're at we're actually we're at an hour. Uh, so, Ooh. before we end it off, uh, just off the top of your head, I'll say my AFC Coach of the Year. Uh, just because I didn't really have a lot of Titans on my awards, my AFC Coach of the Year is Vrabel. Okay, I'm gonna do NFC, and that's Ron Rivera. Okay. Oh, I like. Oh, I like the Rivera pick. Is he cancer free? Yeah, he is. He is great. Now, great. for my AFC, he's he's a new guy. He came over from the Rams. And that's Brandon Brandon Staley for the Chargers. Absolutely loved him as a defense coordinator with Sean McVay in LA. Absolutely love him as a head coach. I think the Chargers can win ten games this season. And that's my pick for AFC head coach of the year. And honestly, I don't think it's a bad one. I love my two picks. Yeah, I like that pick. Who was your NFC? Oh, Revere. NFC was Ron Revere. Yeah. Well, uh, I think on that note, we, uh, we're approaching an hour. I think uh, unless there's anything else you want to throw in, we can go ahead and end it. No, I think it's about it for me. Uh, as always, uh, thank you all for watching. If you made it this far, let us know your picks or if you disagree with some of our picks. 
Uh, but give a reasoning. Don't just be some idiot in my comment section. Uh, Aziz Ojolari. Jesus Christ, that was terrible. But uh, yeah, thank you all for watching, and uh, peace out.